I want to do the Reginald one first because it's sort of the light-hearted humour. Like, I'll give you an <laughs> angle. I, like, I, this, is, this is one of the things I've always found weird is how people never seem to ever guess my angle beforehand. Because here's one that I found very bizarre about the response to the TSM investigates TSM in fucking results was like, remember, TSM are the ones who paid for it and arranged it, right? You are aware there's no legal requirement they ever published that if they actually found they were guilty or something. In fact, yep. <laughs> at that point, spoiler, this happened many, many times. In fact, this is actually about, this might be what ESEC gets banged out on. ESEC apparently ages ago said that they were going to publish like, you know, who funds them essentially in a bunch of their like financial stuff. So I saw Lopez because he's at odds with the, the ESEC at the moment. He was sort of like, oh, so where can I see these right now? Because here's the problem. They're, just because they say that on Twitter, they're not legally obliged to. They just said they do it to be nice. So same scenario. Here's what people haven't thought through bear in mind tsm's investigating tsm spoiler i, su I suspect that's like when t cigarette companies used to say i want a study done that maybe doesn't find that cigarettes cause cancer in any way and magically you go away you do a bunch of experiments and the one that you bring back to your boss to get paid for the research thing finds out exactly what he wanted first of all there's that element obviously at play and then secondly as i say imagine they'd come back and they go well you won't believe this Reginald, but we actually did find a couple of angles mate like you know you're doing this thing illegally what do you think is next line is well, go ahead and publish it to the public. I'll be absolutely right to cross the calls. By the way, he's involved in like actual legal cases right now as well. Like, spoiler, there was never anything coming down the pipe on that one. Like, I can't even <laughs> believe people think that was ever touching goal. So, <laughs> I mean, there's there's just so many layers of stupidity to this. So, first off, the findings were that he didn't do anything illegal, which he was never accused of doing anything illegal, oh, no. guys. As far as we can tell, he was just an asshole. Aside from uh, the which, contract stuff, which I don't think they were investigating anyway. No, 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 they weren't. So there's several there's several things like, yes, they, they they figured out that he wasn't being discriminatory against protected classes, which is illegal under California employment law. Now, it's a little bit interesting because we have video evidence of him using homophobic slurs against his employees previously. So that was a little that was a little interesting to me. But the other thing is they interviewed like 30 former or current employees. But if you are a current employee who has suffered, you know, verbal harassment from Reginald, you probably aren't going to go to the TSM investigation and talk about it because you know that it wasn't illegal. And so you know what the findings going to be. The findings are everything is fine. Reginald's still CEO of the company and he's still in charge. So why would you want to put yourself in a position of weakness if you are still working there as part of this investigation? Now, the Washington Post article interviewed a dozen, over a dozen, it said, you know, current or former employees and found this history. And indeed, there were like half a dozen or so of the, the employees at TSM who told the investigation these things. But my, I think what's going to happen is that more of the people who are upset about this situation are more likely to go to the Washington Post or to the riot investigation, which still, as far as we know, hasn't concluded. And obviously, riot has a vested interest in covering this up as well, but the LCS Players Association is also involved in the riot investigation. And so they are, a, I, I am hoping that they can be the neutral party that is the, the moderating force on this to prevent anything bad that happened from being covered up, guys. Um, I mean, the other thing that was completely ridiculous about this is that Reginald published it in a twit longer on his own Twitter. So they're clearly trying to not put this out of the, the official TSM accounts. And it, it was just incredibly unprofessional. Like it's clear TSM doesn't want their sponsors to really like see this. They don't want a bunch of replies onto the TSM social media. So they just did it casually on, you know, Reginald's account and they did it on the same day they released the Peter Zhang stuff to divert attention to it. So there are a lot of like really dirty tricks that were used in terms of PR to try and also minimize looks this. like to me. Here's the difference. You know, back in the day, like the infamous what he did about you, where he did that fucking whack ass apology and twit longer, where it was like all fucking terrible grammar, barely made any sense. Like you fucking didn't really know how to start a sentence and end a sentence. First of all, you could even see on this one, they've cynically this looked like a lawyer was involved, mate. This is like that was a huge real statement. So there's the the other angle I find inauthentic as fuck. When you do the, the comment from Reginald's account, the implication is, I'm going to give you the real guys. I'm cutting out the PR middlemen. Let me tell you how it is. And then it's just obviously like fucking, listen, he couldn't write that fucking statement. I'll tell you that right now. So no. I don't believe it at all. He wouldn't write it that way. He's not as professional as that, is he? He's not as way he's playing. No, but this is, this is, this is par <laughs> for the course, guys, when it comes to esports and especially riot based esports, that there is never any lasting punishment for things that have done, have, have gone wrong. Riot 
was Riot just paid a hundred million dollars divided among every woman who has ever worked at the company, and zero people were fired. Zero. Like the whole Scott Gelb like face farting incident. This also was Scott Gelb fired. No, he was given a paid like an unpaid vacation basically and some training for a few months. And he's still the CEO of the company. Like they don't, Riot doesn't care. Like once you reach the executive level, you are just immune from. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just immune from the effects of your exactly. of your actions. The company will just pay for it, put you on put you on a nice vacation, and then you come back and you still have your job, even though. Clearly, you know, there are plenty of ex executives that a company as rich as Riot could pay to come in and help run this company. They didn't even scapegoat anybody, which is insane. Like, I have never seen a scandal this big at a company and no one leaves. Like when the shit happened at Blizzard, the president of Blizzard left, guys. Like, <laughs> you know, like, they, the people stepped down. They fired people. There were no people fired from Riot at all. How can... There'd be a culture of systemic abuse at this company that affected, according to the state of California, that affected every single woman who's ever worked there and nobody was fired for it. So if you have hope that Riot's going to like put their foot down and say, oh, no, you know, even though nothing illegal happened with TSM, we're going to need you to like remove Reginald from the company. That's what they did with Echo Fox, by the way, is they said, because these things were happening, you need to get this person, um, you know, out of the company entirely. They couldn't accomplish that goal. And so they had to kind of give up their slot. Right. Um, you can also it. say it's comparable to the what happened with all those NFL owners and some of the shit oh, that's yeah. going on. I mean, even essentially what just Grand happened. Snyder's ridiculous. Like, yeah, I mean, fuck? not even just the owners. I mean, even just what happened with John Gruden. Like, that's right in the Reginald wheelhouse. What are you talking about? That's the sort of level of you know, unprofessional shit he was up to. Yep. Yeah, that's actually a very good comparison, actually. And you know what? He was instantly removed. As be. Being, even yeah. though he had a 10-year contract yep. with the Raiders, he was instantly removed in the middle of a season, guys, yep. because of that. But it's okay, you know, Reginald, totally fine doing what he does, even though he continued the behavior that we've seen on video up until right now, basically, uh, if we're to believe the reports that have come out um, and the things that people are saying publicly. So I just would, I wouldn't have a lot of hope if if I were you guys for the, the, the riot reaction. I mean, I think it's perfectly reasonable. I, I don't, here's another question that I just don't know the answer to. Why is he so critical to this operation? TSM has a board that could remove him and replace him with somebody else. Like, wh what is what is he doing that is so crucial to the operations of this company at this point in time that he is irreplaceable from in the board's eyes? It's wild. Because the problem is, when you look at all the issues, they all stem from the fact that it doesn't seem like he ever truly delegates. Like, as they said in that Washington Post article, even when people would go away and do a whole project, at the end, it wasn't good enough because effectively you had to read Reginald's mind. It wasn't even if it was good. It was, was it exactly what he had in mind that he himself didn't know he wanted? Like, at that point in time, like, you're just not delegating at all there, mate. Like, you're not giving people a chance. So part of the problem for me is I think Reginald really does think he is Tony Stark and this is Tony, this is Stark Industries and he's, like, essential to the project. Whereas, as you say, the joke is, you've already made it. You've done the bank heist, Reginald. Yes. You can actually just sail off, live on a fucking yeah. tropic island while getting infinite passive income into your life. Instead, for some reason, you are doing the only things that could risk you actually <laughs> be, not being involved in TSM anymore. This is the only way you can fuck it up, is by being you publicly on camera. So you're doing it for some reason. I don't know why. By the way, one thing that annoys me as well is how many fucking years did you and me have to hear the shittiest apologies of all time and I'm talking about apologists as in people defending the position not apologizing on behalf of him and it went like this well it's been many years since then so I'm sure he has grown and improved based on what Based on what? Because the entire time, just like a reckless, where I know what I'm talking about, I have all the teammates, just like that, I was hearing from people, literally up to even last season, Reginald is still the same way, he still busts in the room, when he comes in, you don't talk the same way you do in front of the other teammates, he criticises people, he says things about the game, he fucking walks in like he's a coach and starts telling you what you're doing wrong in the game, like... The, he does all the same shit he did before. They told me essentially it's more just like he like nominally is like hands off now, but he's, it's he can't help himself. He's one of those people. It's like me and Twitter. He has to open it. He has to go and see it, doesn't he? he can't fucking stay away. So difference is <laughs> I'm not doing anything to fuck anyone else's life up, am I? Except for the ones who deserve it. <laughs> I mean, I, I just think I think the whole situation is like I think it's pretty clear cut at this point in time. Even if it was like 
20% of the people they interviewed said that there were pretty severe issues. If you have 20% of your oh, employees yeah. who are willing to speak up about this, guys, that means there's more, by the way. There, it definitely means there's at least a few more, if not many more, who are not willing to speak up. Um, I, I, how can you work at a company where 20% of your employees are being tweet, treated this way? That's completely unprofessional. And here's the thing about startups versus established companies. It takes different kinds of people to create a startup oftentimes than it does to run an established company. And that's why a lot of startups end up handing off the executive or leadership roles once they've kind of made it in terms of stability as a company, because the pe there's often, you know, it's kind of a Wild West scenario when you're starting up a company, as opposed to the protocols and the professionalism that are required to structure a company for the long term. And while Reggie may have been the person who took advantage of the Wild West phase of esports and TSM at the time, like, it, I don't think it's a big issue to transition him to somebody else at this stage, just as that's true with a lot of esports companies. So it confuses me the insistence that Riot, that TSM have in keeping these people on when they are certainly not irreplaceable. The thing I found so dodgy is the point you made, that if you look at the way they've chosen to communicate, it actually does. This isn't like when Lena just rushes to Reddit and starts replying to TSM fans, naming her sponsor as the reason that you're having a fucking sound leak, which is just, that's just pure incompetence. You've got to understand, that's just an idiot doing something stupid that they think is the correct decision, totally premeditated, and that's genuinely what they thought was like. They waded up, and then they hit send. No, there was no timer, no gun to the head, no fucking like, block about to drop. They just chose to do that. That's what idiot they are but in the way that reginald did it like you said they would have done it through the tsm account if they wanted the whole world to see it they would have done yep. it on the website if they wanted this to counter and more importantly if this proved that it was all not bullshit it was all nonsense they would they would be fucking shout that would be in sky writing like carlos style across fucking la right now but it isn't and the reason why i find it sinister is this Whenever I see these articles that tell me that TSM is worth four hundred million dollars as a valuation for their company, here's what it's people not, don't by understand. The way, spoiler: <laughs> like, these are the things that kill those valuations dead. Like no one wants to be involved with companies where they think like the founders are fucking idiots or it's a terrible place to work or even worse. Think about the Washington Post. Like, that implies like you can't have innovation there. You won't have creativity. You don't crowdsource the best brains and get the best ideas. It all goes through the fucking sort of the sluice gate of one guy's brain, and if he disagrees, it all gets tossed to the Side. That's the sort of thing where, by the way, spoiler, if he ever goes public, that'll make you talk stock price fucking tank boys that's the sort of shit where people lose confidence in the company so it's actually very key that tsm also plays this very carefully like fans now are going to go what do you mean it is all over reddit you idiots no one fucking looks at reddit who's outside of the industry they don't give a flying fuck they don't even know what reddit is do they they know what it is exists as a site like they're not even on it anyway that's bored people at work in america so at the moment they've done a very good job keeping it but i'm waiting for the day by the way where finally that shit does break out because i even think it's the same thing with riot and blizzard it's only the sexual harassment stuff that leaks out into the mainstream from those companies right it's never somehow all the other stupid shit they do and all the harebrained schemes they have because the day those things ever get out they're actually gonna have to face the real world consequence of what happens when you fuck around like that and you are either a public company and you have shareholders to account for or like that's the other thing reginald doesn't have right now or you're in a situation where you got massive vc pumped in and people are like well why am i giving you the next round if this is going on so they're lucky right now they're sort of fucking skating on thin ice but they're just surviving just and it's only going to take one more big thing about opinion before it goes to shit yeah and i think too like it, it was very interesting the framing that nothing illegal had occurred and also just as a point now I've said this many times, there is no reason to believe that anything illegal happens, such as discrimination based on a, sex, uh, uh, on a protected class, sexual harassment, these issues. But also, if in the digging it is found, like, or if somebody comes forward with these claims, why would they tell the TSM investigation? Why would they do that when they know there are other independent investigations happening? So, like, it was very unlikely to turn up the same people, or at least some of the same people who are probably concerned for their jobs based on what they said. And it's certainly, considering you know what's going to happen, it certainly probably wasn't going to turn up anything illegal because that behavior, if it existed, which no reason to believe it does, again, if it existed, would not be turned up by this investigation when everyone knows there's a, there's a concurrent investigation going on that would be a lot safer to tell these things than TSM. 
than the lawyers TSM hired. The main problem I have is this. It's because no one except Double if publicly comes forward. I already, like you said, I've, I've already written off the idea Riot's ever going to do anything, even, by the way, just for sure. I think they'll also just find not anything conclusive in their report. The real one I'm interested in is the legal case potentially against them from the state of California of whether or not, because actually the way it was characterized, how they were using contractors, which absolutely does look very dodgy. And as you know, with the whole TFU thing and some of the things happening in the last few years, with what is an organization a company with employees or is it an agency and that was like a very fucking fraught aspect and so that's what i want to see because if people don't know that has the the, the possibility to be an enormous precedent in esports that could tear the entire industry up like spoiler if they get close to tsm on that and it's like tsm it's touch and go i think it's like the phase one i think that gets that some sort of settlement happens or you take a plea bargain or something you don't let that go through because it could just ruin no. the whole industry I mean, I can just I can just tell you guys straight up that issue that was brought up about TSM and contractors in the state of California. Basically, every esports team is guilty of doing that at a certain point in time. Yes, it's how. By the way, and this is even how you're able to run. The spoiler is, if you didn't do that, most companies would have to leave California. They have to go somewhere else in the U.S. because this is how people are getting a competitive edge on each other. They are saying that someone's a contractor, but then they're doing all these things as if you're an employee. Like, come on Monday morning, you have to live in California. You have to play in this scenario. I, I actually brought this point up on another show. The first time I ever heard this actually, money was way before the TFU thing. It was when Sean Gares himself had that dispute with Reginald over whether they had to play in PEA or whether they could choose to play in the ESL Pro league because what sean guest told me was he said i've looked into this he can't legally tell me as a contractor i have to play in this league on this day and this he said that's not the way it works like you you you, you set like finite goals that are set in a certain way and i can kind of have some say in how it's done like because that's i'm not his employee and i remember thinking back then like Myth, that's a bigger issue than you and Steve Reginald. And this, and this is not you are aware you're set on like the bomb that blows up Californian esports if it ever goes off. So, like, yeah, <laughs> I've been a long time. It's another one of the ones like the IP rights. I'm just waiting for these battles to happen because they're going to happen eventually with the millions and millions of dollars going up and up and up and up. I mean, I think I think that it's it that practice is very uncommon in the industry now. Um, it was mostly an issue like several years ago, like five plus years ago. So, I, I don't think that that particular like contractor thing is as common as it used to be but i don't i also don't know about tsm's in particular practices but that practice has gone down dramatically over the last few years across most of the team so very interesting though <laughs> very, very interesting i mean it's, it's pop- i'll say this very carefully Based on information I've seen, I suspect that Bjergsen was breaking all kinds of laws along with Reginald in America, like immigration laws, work laws, as we say, contract laws. And that's your pride and joy, remember, TSM fans? It's all about Bjergsen. He was the success story in TSM, was he fuck? Like everyone, they're all little fucking rats using every little corner they could in the in the industry. And it's only, this is how it works in every industry, by the way, it's only when you all make so much money. Now, the joke is, like, people know this back in the day, the mafia guys, they're just the lower level criminal once you get really big you go legit don't you the joke is even the mafia want to go legit and actually have a real business and not have to be the fucking guys beating you up they want the real casino where you just make all the money like that's the way that every industry operates i'm afraid you start off at the bottom and as i say the premise back then goes if you were the moral actor you're just at a massive competitive disadvantage to the guys who will abuse these things like if you sit there back before people got good lawyers and you had the precedent you could get those visas logically you would apply and get a failed visa meanwhile the other guys played on his tourist visa like there was that's just the, that's where the esports was the wild west basically uh you know all i'll say is that in the early days i'm not going to discuss specific instances but in the early days of lcs there was a lot of illegal shit going on sure there was a lot there was a lot guys <laughs> want to see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't